Greetings, everybody. I pray everybody's doing well on this Friday morning. We're trying to get connected to Facebook also, but we're having trouble with connection. Internet's not been really good. So if you just bear with me for just a few moments, we're going to see if we can get on and get this get this rolling and see there we go god bless you thank you for joining me after six letters and six is the number of it's the number of man but we remember we brought to your attention that on the flip side every coin has two sides on the flip side the number six is the number of harmony and and then we take seven and six we got 13. 13 is the number of bridal praise, Psalm 150th chapter. And then you go down to the sun realm, the sonship realm. And we find that the, the word sun has three letters. And three is the number of spiritual uh, completion, uh, showing that what God has done in the servant realm and the friendship realm, God has equipped us and furnished us. We're complete now and ready. Uh, when we deal with the sonship realm, three is the number of spiritual completion. It's important that we look at that, that the sonship realm, when you look at the uh, uh, 13 and three is 16, and 16 is the number of love. And what is God? But God is love. So this is the realm. What does the son do but reflect the character, the image, and the personality of the father? So this is where we reflect God's character, God's nature in our life. Then we go from the sonship realm to the bride realm. Bride has five letters. Five is the number of grace or atonement. And when you deal with the, the bride realm, uh, everybody, everybody wants to be a bride, but nobody wants to be a mother. They like the, the excitement of wearing a, a wedding dress. They like the excitement of getting married. They like the excitement of being the center of the attention. But when it comes to the following morning, and now you're not just a bride, you're a wife and a mother or a wife. And, you know, there's responsibilities that change from being the bride to being the wife. And, and a lot of us want to be the bride of Christ, but we don't want to marry Christ. And that marrying him requires some, some commitment, some accountability, and some responsibility that goes beyond the bride. Amen. Uh, most of us realize that we look at today's society, a lot of women get caught up in the excitement and the enthusiasm of marriage, but they don't realize after marriage comes the responsibilities. After marriage comes the uh, duties and all the things that come with marriage. And that then when they get into that realm, they're like, whoa, what did I get into? Uh, you know, uh, and, and so it's important that we understand that. It's important that we acknowledge that, that, okay, when we make this decision, this commitment, we are going to accept some responsibilities that we got to be. The word that gets impregnated into us, we're accountable for that. We're responsible for that, and it's up to us to train it and nurture it. Then you go from the wife realm to, or to the bride, from the bride realm to the wife realm. The wife has four letters. Four is the number of procreative power. This is the this is the step in God where Zion travails. Children will be brought forth when the body of Christ and the church begins to travail and begins to do what God has initiated in them and God has appointed them to do. Look at Isaiah sixty one and one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because there's been a mission. Because God has appointed us to do those things in Isaiah 61. Read on down that chapter and it begins to itemize what we've been appointed to. Genesis 1.28, God blessed man and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. There are appointments, there are purposes that we are scheduled to walk into. And it's, so it's important that this is the realm where we can begin to birth these now. These realms don't take 10 years, don't take one year, don't take five years. These realms can happen as quick as you and I are willing to submit. The Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due season I will exalt you. So every one is a point of humility, where we walk into uh, humility saying, okay, God, you're the God of my life. You control my life. You are my strong man, and we give God ultimate control over our thoughts, our our vision, over everything about who we are and what we are in, 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 in ourselves. So this is the realm where we birth. Now, when you take 
7 plus 6 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4, and you add those together, if somebody will add those together for me and tell me what we have, I, if I count right, we have 24, if that's right. The number 24 is the number of priesthood. This is where we walk into the priestly nature of, of, of the royalty of the family of God. This is where we experience. The Bible said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Why? That you should show forth, exhibit, manifest, and demonstrate that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness. So it's important that this, when you walk and you walk through all five of these steps, this is where you solidify your position this is where you solidify your place in the kingdom of God. And you're not only able to birth the promises and birth the blessings and birth the inheritance, but now you are a priesthood. You walk in royalty. Amen. You walk in dominion and power. You have authority from the king. Come on, hear what I'm saying to you. So when you look at these, every one of these steps that we walk through in, in solidifying our relationship with God simply happens this. God also in each one of those steps activates, activates our five senses, one of our five senses of the spirit man. Now, when you deal with the, we are three dimensional body, soul, and spirit. The body has five senses. The five senses of the body are sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. But then you go into the soul man or the seed of the spiritual life that has five senses. And those five senses of the soul man are imagination, conscience, memory, reason, and affection. How many know that all five of those things operate from the soul, the emotions? The soul is your appetites, passions, desires, and, and, and emotions, everything that comes out of you. It's what keeps you driving. And so uh, then you deal with the spirit man, the three dimensions of man, body, soul, and spirit. The spirit man has five senses, and those five senses are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You notice the last and the final is worship because God does not seek for just praise. He seeks for worship. He said, the father seeketh such to do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. So as you go through these five steps of solidifying and building your relationship with God, you are also being activated in one of these five senses of the spirit man. And you are activated in faith. You become to the acknowledgement that faith is more than just sitting on a pew and believing God. But faith is the substance. Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance. He didn't say it was the faith of the believing. He said it's the substance of things hoped for. If you study the word substance, substance means the ingredients, the vital or necessary ingredients. So faith is the vital necessary ingredients of what I hope for. And it's the evidence. What, what is it? So faith is the character of God. Come on now. Demonstrated because Christ is the visible form of an invisible God. And he became the evidence of the Father. Hear what I'm saying to you. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because I and the Father are one. So when we look at this, he said, uh, the first step is faith, then we deal with hope. You must have hope. What was the problem with Israel in Ezekiel 37? Their hope was lost. Reverence. This is the biggest issue I see in the church today is we've lost reverence for the house of God, reverence for the kingdom of God, reverence for the name of God. Uh, so that's important. Then we deal with prayer. You can't get to the last one except you go by this. Come on now. He said, I inhabit the praises of my people. Come on now. You got to praise him. You got to give him a place to live. Then you go to the last one is worship. God seeks for people to worship him. This brings us into the priest realm. This brings us into a priestly nature. This solidifies who we are and what we are in the kingdom of God. So it's important that when you deal with those and you look at those, it's important that you get a hold of this and you grab this because there is something here that God is going to do to your life. This is Dr. Michael Smith saying, this is the day. 
which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Don't ever forget, something good is going to happen to you. You better get ready. It's right around the corner. God bless you. I'd love to hear from you, Liberty Ministry Warriors at Yahoo. I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you've been blessed by our broadcast, please contact us. Let us know. Hey, Dr. Smith, I caught you on Periscope. Man, I really enjoyed that. Or, hey, Dr. Smith, I thought you was a total nutcase. Uh, and that's your decision. That's your, you know what, you got to give what you feel. But And also visit us on Amazon.com. Enter Dr. Michael Smith in the search bar, and all my books will come up. Take your credit card, download every single one of my e-books. Amen. God will bless you in those books. We love you guys. God bless you is our prayer. Have a great day.